Thank you, Kelly. That was beautiful. Let's pray. Thanks, God, that you love us. Thank you that the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Uh, Father, we just praise you for sending your Son to us. Um, uh, we just thank you for this Christmas story that we're beginning to embark on in this season where we acknowledge uh, the humility of our God um, and his willingness to come as a baby. Uh, to, to live a sinless life and to die in our place on the cross, uh, to invite us into an eternal relationship with him. And uh, we just thank you. Uh, we praise you. And um, we look forward to what you're going to teach us today in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, this is the time of year where we start to uh, give gifts to each other uh, as a, a symbol, uh, in a sense, of um, just sharing uh, what we have with each other. I think that's a, a good way of looking at the Christmas season as we share uh, with each other our lives and our gifts and what's important. And it's really tradition. We saw that uh, the, uh, the wise men brought gifts to Jesus. We've heard that story since we were little. If you've been in, in the church or grown up in the South, you've always heard that story. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, you know, so we have these Christmas parties and and in years past, we would probably go to have gone to more. This year, we're probably not going to as quite as many. But um, I think you know some of us have received some gifts that we may not always like. Uh, and so, where do they go? They go up into the uh, re-gift closet. You know, does anybody have a re-gift closet? I know some of you ladies do, where you might get a gift at a party or something, and it's not uh, not quite the gift that you uh, you had in mind. So you kind of put it up in the closet. And you wait for another time or another season to re-gift it to somebody else. So um, the, what, the most embarrassing thing that you've ever seen is when you uh, you realize you've re-gifted the same gift back to the person that gave it to you. So uh, I've heard that happen a time or two. And uh, this is not going to be the case with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. If someone was going to give you some gold, you probably are not going to put it in the re-gift category. You're gonna, probably going to keep that gold. And... Uh, gold signifies a lot. So we're going to talk, this is a three-week ser uh, series on gold, frankincense, and myrrh, the three gifts, and what those three gifts signify to us and our relationship with Jesus. So we're going to uh, begin today with gold, uh, the gifts of Christmas. And um, the gold rec uh, represents, uh, obviously, a precious metal, something that's very precious to us. And it, it also signifies the position uh, that Jesus had. Because gold is um, uh, signifying his position as king. So we're going to associate gold with Jesus' kingship uh, as we go through this lesson today. So the gifts of Christmas confirm uh, that Jesus is your Lord and King. Uh, that is uh, part of the series that we were on uh, leading up to Christmas, uh, where um, uh, Israel was shouting, Give us a king! Lord, uh, uh, Samuel, remember the story of Samuel, um, they went to Samuel and they wanted a king. Uh, they weren't happy without, uh, without uh, uh, God, they weren't happy with God being their king, they wanted an earthly king. So we, we talked about that for several weeks. And the question that we, we ended that series with, are you sure that the Lord God is your king? So I think that's what God wanted Israel to know during those uh, years where they had kings, is that uh, you need to know that God is your king and not some earthly person. You know, David was probably the best representation of a king that uh, uh, had a heart for God, but um, there wasn't very many other good kings after that. And so uh, we see in this time of year, I think I, I, God led me into that um, study because of the season we're going through, where, where we're trying to elect a president, you know, uh, most people say we've already elected a president, and some people are saying we, we're still waiting on all those final results. So we're, we're in a sense, uh, crying out for some form of leadership. Well, um, this little baby that showed up was the King of King and Lord of Lords, and we'll look at that later. And he was confirmed by these gifts, and the first gift is the gift of gold. And that gold uh, signifies Jesus as the eternal king. So um, I want to look at the Advent reading. This was really for last Sunday, but it was uh, prophesied by Isaiah centuries before the birth. And uh, it's also read in Luke, 
uh, paraphrased in Luke. But uh, let's read Isaiah 9, 2, uh, and 6, and 7. Uh, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For us, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Uh, the zeal of the Lord Almighty. That, I think, is what many of us um, have been missing in the last several months. I, I just sense that there's this kind of this fog over our nation. Our, our uh, it, It's tough with this uh, virus that's going around. We've had to our lives have had to change. Uh, things have gotten more difficult. We've had to be more careful. Um, so what, what I think we want to walk away with today is this zeal that comes from knowing that God is our king and that um, it was forecasted centuries before even Jesus was born. And uh, God, uh, in, his, um, in his holiness, knew that we needed we needed a savior. We needed help. Uh, so uh, he could have come on a mighty horse and with a mighty army of angels and just, you know, slayed the, the devil and saved us all right then and there. But what did he, did he do that? What did he do? He came as a little baby. And that is something that's just kind of beyond our understanding or comprehension. But as we, as we continue, I guess the older we get, the more we realize that it is that is that childlike humility that God requires of us to uh, just enter into a deeper relationship with him and with each other. So if we walk into the room kind of like on our high horse, have you ever heard that saying? If you're from down south, I know you have. Then you're probably not going to enter into a very deep relationship with, with everybody in the room. God wants to have a relationship with you. And so the only way that he could do that and prove that was to come as a baby. And yet he was king. So this gold, this gift of gold represents king. We don't know exactly who the Magi were. Uh, we're not going to do a theological study on where they came from. And, but they saw a star. They knew that something was going on that was uh, unique and special and, and probably... Um, from, uh, from, from something other than this world. Something uh, supernatural was going on and they acknowledged that and recognized that and came. And they came and they brought gifts with them because they knew that if something supernatural was happening, that, that they needed to have something to give, to acknowledge that there was an importance to what was going on. So um, we also know the story in Matthew. Um, where we, we hear the, the term initially, king of the Jews, we saw that, where, where did we see that most significantly? On the cross. But this is interesting that we also hear it early on when he was a baby. In Matthew uh, 1, 2. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, remember, here's the king story again. Herod wasn't a very nice king, was he? Behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. So King Herod probably wasn't too happy about that, was he? No, he thought he was king of the Jews. And how do these guys from some other country show up with all these gifts looking for the king of the Jews when Herod thought he was king of the Jews? So this signifies the importance of Jesus. Even when he was a baby, he was acknowledged as king of the Jews. And the gift of gold 
uh, confirms that position. And after they had come into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they fell down and worshipped him. When was the last time you fell down and worshipped Jesus? Even as a little baby, these very learned scholars who had traveled a long way, bearing gifts, knew the minute they came into the presence of Jesus that he was God. They, they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Man, when we were kids, we always kind of thought that was really cool to have uh, that, to set up the manger scene and uh, to have all the animals around the baby Jesus. And there was always these three kings uh, riding on their camels. And they all had these big uh, treasure chests on the back of their camels. And they were coming to see Jesus. That was always one of the fun scenes that we got to set up as a kid. We don't know that there were three kings, but it, well, we knew that there were three gifts. Cause we, uh, so we just always assumed there were three kings. There could have been more or less. We don't know. But um, anyways, uh, uh, this king, uh, unlike Herod, who ruled with an iron fist and would, um, would just kill off whoever uh, he didn't like, this king, Jesus, ruled and reigned with love. He was a king of love. Um, it, was, it was his position as the eternal king. It was his position as king of the Jews, and it's also his position as the king of love. He was to reign not by force, but by love. And he was to rule over men's hearts, not a throne, but from a cross. That was in uh, William Barclay's commentary. It was, it was very common to give a gift to a king it was actually necessary to come into a king's presence uh, back in the Middle East, uh, without which one does not approach an Eastern monarch. Uh, that was written a couple hundred years ago by Joseph Excel. So he had researched uh, how people would enter into the presence of an Eastern monarch or king, and they'd always bring a gift. So you couldn't come into the presence of a king without a gift. And it was interesting that the um, most of the gifts that you would bring, and we've been watching and studying some of the um, uh, some of the British uh, monarch, and there were people from all over the world would come, and they would bring gifts to the king and queen of, of Britain, and those gifts would be unique to whatever part of the world, but because the sun never set on the on the um, British throne. Uh, because of they they own so much uh, or possess so much property or countries around the world, so each whenever one of those dignitaries would come to the to the British throne, they would bring a gift that would remind the king and queen of that part of the world. So it was really a, a reminder. It was a precious gift, but it was a reminder of where those people were from, so that they would always remember that part of the world when they were making their decisions. Or uh, um, so. Most of the gifts that were given to the kings were about the giver. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like, hey, remember us. Remember, remember the people that I represent in your, in your decision making. It's a precious gift for the king, but it was about the giver. Um, the difference here is that these gifts um, were given not... Uh, as, uh, to remind us as, of, of the giver, but to remind us of the receiver. Jesus was receiving these gifts and signifying that he was the king. Uh, he didn't re-gift those gifts. Um, he actually paid for those gifts. And we'll talk about that a little later. But he paid for them with his life, his own blood, so that he could re-gift those gifts to us. He not only received gold signifying that he was king, but he gave it back to you. He gave back his life to you. He gave this position to you as co-heir with Christ. Do we feel like monarchs? I mean, we don't feel like the British king and queen, do we? 
I mean, do our lives look very kingly or queenly? But that's who God says we are. We are co-heirs with Christ. That is beyond our comprehension in, in our um, finite minds, in our experiences. Things don't, all, things don't go right for us all the time, do they? You would think that if we were a king or a queen of the living God, things would go right for us all the time. But they don't. But that doesn't, that doesn't diminish your position that Jesus bought and paid for with his own blood to make you a co-heir with him. You are to rule and reign, not only this earth, but forever with him in heaven, worshiping God, bowing with him, but ruling and reigning as kings and queens of heaven in Christ Jesus. That's beyond our comprehension, but that's what's true about us. Sometimes we have to get back from this world and the circumstances that we're in and and really acknowledge what God has done for us and the position that he has put us in now. We are in these same positions with Christ, in Christ. Jesus is, is no longer on the cross, uh, which was his earthly throne. Now he is seated at the right hand of the Father in his heavenly throne, back in his rightful place. But now who is with him? We are. You and I are in Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father at this very moment. Now, we see each other sitting in this room in our, in our phys physicalness, in our earthly bodies. But what Jesus is telling us is that our eternal position is at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus, sitting on the throne with him. Now, you don't hear that preached every Sunday, do you? But that's what Jesus is saying right here as, as to who we are because of what he's done for us. Because the gold signified that he had the authority to do that. That he was not only an earthly king, but more important, an eternal king. Gold represented that uh, Jesus was the king of the great exchange. And that's what I'm talking about now. He exchanged his very life, we talked about this last week, for your life. He came to trade places with you. He bought you with his blood. That's how precious you are. He was eternal. He was the eternal king. He was the king of the Jews. He was the king of everlasting love. And he's the king of the great exchange. Uh, the first gift of gold is for a newborn Jesus, but certainly points to his position as king, as we've noted. However, let's ponder for a moment what this all signifies. Most important than the affirmation of the baby Jesus as king, the Father sent the Son as a gift for you, which certainly points to your position as co-heir with Christ. The gift of Jesus not only represents the giver, but also the receiver. God was the giver, you are the receiver. His value was exchanged for you. It was and is the great exchange. We talked about this last week. If someone pays, uh, let's use the illustration of gold. Gold costs so much an ounce. So if you go to buy a bar of gold and someone says, well, that's $1,000, and you say, well, I don't have a thousand, I have nine hundred, and the seller goes, Well, I'll take nine hundred for it. How much is that bar of gold worth? A thousand or nine hundred? Nine hundred. That's what that's what the transaction uh, bottom line was, was the nine hundred dollars. So now we have placed a value on that that bar of gold as of nine hundred dollars. Well, what what was paid for you? The blood of Jesus, his very life. God gave his only son for you and paid for you with his very own son, his most beloved son. So what value does that place on you from God the Father? An eternal value that's of love that's beyond our comprehension. God loved you so much he sent his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How much are you worth?
The fifth reason the gift of gold was important was because Jesus represented the living king. He was eternal. He was of the Jews. He was of love. He was of the great exchange. His life for your life. And he is the living king. Jesus replied to her. Um, this was the woman at the well. If you knew the gift of God and who it was who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Living water. We serve a living God. He died on the cross. He was resurrected in three days. He finished his work on the cross and he rose to give you new life. It's a living God that we serve. If he's alive eternally, that means you'll be alive eternally. Uh, the Greek word here, uh, gift, is best translated favor. The gift of life or the favor of life. God has favored you highly. He has loved you highly. There is favor for you. And sometimes we let this world... Uh, distract us and get in the way of the favor that we've received from God. Sometimes our decisions and our circumstances and our choices don't resemble the favor of God. Sometimes how we treat each other, what we say to each other, uh, how we respond to each other does not look like the favor of God. Sometimes we don't favor each other like God favors us. But the living God favors you. And he favors me. And he wants us to favor each other. The sixth confirmation of this gift of gold and the final confirmation is Jesus is the King of Kings. John reveals to us at the end of the Bible and on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It means that he is, in fact, the sovereign over the kings of the earth and all the nobles and princes under his control, a rank that properly belongs to the Son of God. Uh, Albert Barnes said that. Frank Gold, Frankincense, and Myrrh. Uh, his position we talked about today, his presence and his purpose we'll talk about uh, in the coming weeks. Um, I'm reminded of a story of, a, of an Eastern monarch that I met one time. Uh, he, he came bearing gifts. This guy pulled up on a job site that I was working on. It was a renovation of a big house. And it turns out, as we started going through this house, uh, there was gold everywhere in this house. Even the toilets were made of gold. This, 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 I'm sorry? Real gold. real gold. This guy had toilet seats of real gold. This was a prince of a Middle Eastern country. This guy was the real deal. He pulls up, this is years later after he moved away, three big long black Suburbans pull up screaming up the driveway onto this big, huge house that we were renovating. Dust everywhere. The first guys jump out of the first, big guys jump out of the first SUV, big guys jump out of the last SUV, and they start looking around. They wait, you know, long enough to let all the dust clear, and then out comes this prince. And he starts walking up to all the construction workers, guys just out there with shovels in their hands or saws or we had hundreds of workers everywhere, and he starts slap, giving everybody handshakes as he comes in. And every time he gave somebody a handshake, he had a $100 bill in his hand. So he was palming every guy out there with a $100 bill. Now, was, that, was he doing that for all those guys, all those workers? Well, maybe, you know, trying to you know, say, well, this used to be my house. I'm glad you're fixing it up. But he was really doing it for himself. He was really showing off, wasn't he? I mean, he had the money. He had the wherewithal. Let's face it, he had gold toilet seats. I mean, what's $100 slapping $100 around to the construction workers? 
He was doing all of that for himself to show us and remind us how great he was. And that's, that's normal for, for an Eastern monarch and, and to come bearing gifts or vice versa. Um, that, that's just a way of life. Um, so it's, it's not unusual for us to have this story this time of year for the Magi to come bearing gifts for this little baby that they knew was, uh, was something uh, supernatural uh, that was going on, looking for the king of the Jews. They came bearing gifts that would hopefully give them favor, in a sense, I believe, um, so that the king, the baby king, would, would remember them because that's kind of how the system worked. But what really happened was, is the baby Jesus grew up to be a sinless, uh, grown man, and he gave his life for us. Not so that we would think highly of him, so that we would be like him, so that we would be one with him so that we would learn how to be humble like him and to serve each other, not to try to get our needs met, not so that we could be some famous person or acknowledged in some way or meet our own needs, but that we would be like him for others. So we're going to develop this theme um, in the coming weeks, but I want to leave with one last uh, thought. Uh, His throne here uh, on earth was the cross. Think about it. The greatest king that ever walked the earth's throne was a cross. This is where the God-man Jesus Christ traded places with the sinners he redeemed, exchanging his perfect righteousness for their sin, condemnation, and death. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. You are seated with him right now in glory. So our choice is to acknowledge that, acknowledge him as king, acknowledge that he paid for us and made us co-heirs with him, and then walk as sons and daughters of the Most High King. We'll learn more about this through uh, the gift of frankincense and the gift of myrrh. But this week, I just wanted to establish his kingly right to choose you as co-heirs with him. He has all authority to choose you and to make you whatever he wants to make you. And he has made you his co-heir. And God has, God has valued you with the very blood of Jesus. Pretty good gift. Not one you're gonna, not one you're gonna put in the closet, right, and regift to someone else. That's this is a gift we want to claim for eternity. So thank you all for being patient. Let's pray. Thanks, God, that you love us. Thank you that you've gifted us with your very Son, not uh, in a sense to um, to show us how special you are, although all glory is due to you, uh, and in a sense. Uh, It is all glory that uh, you sent your son for us. Uh, So we, 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 we fall and bow down before you and worship you just as the Magi did. Um, We can do that physically or or we can do that just in our prayers at home. Um, But I I pray that uh, this week, as we think about the price that was paid, uh, the trade that was made for our lives, the great exchange, Uh, It's more precious than gold. And um, we have a king in heaven that loves us so much that he's included us in his family now as co-heirs with him. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.